Hey friends, Davey here with Davey and Krista, and today we are going to chat about how you can improve your website speed using WP Rocket. WP Rocket is one of my favorite tools, and it's usually the first thing that I recommend for people looking to improve their website speed after finding a good WordPress website host. In today's video, we're going to walk through all of the different settings in WP Rocket, and I'm going to show you a little behind the scenes look at what settings I have turned on on my website and why. The website we're going to be using as an example here is farmfedbox.com. Farmfed is an online meat delivery service. If you're looking for awesome farm-raised meats, look no further than farmfedbox.com. But that's not what we're here to discuss today. We're here to discuss WP Rocket. So let's dive in. A few things that you're going to want to do before installing and activating WP Rocket. First things first, you're going to want to create a backup of your website. Anytime you install a plugin, sometimes they conflict with one another. They can bring your website down. They can cause different design issues. You want to make sure that if something does go awry, you have a version of your website that you can roll back to. So I highly recommend creating a backup of your website before getting started with this. Along those same lines, the second thing that I would recommend is testing one setting at a time. So turning on a setting, then testing and seeing what it did to your website, how it improved the page speed of your website. So you want to make sure that actually you're improving your website page speed and you're not actually slowing your website down. But the real reason you want to test one setting at a time is if something does break, then you know exactly what setting made your website break. So all of the settings that I have turned on on my website might not work for your website. So that's something to keep in mind as you go through setting up WP Rocket. All right, and one additional note for Show It users. If you have a Show It website with a WordPress blog and you're on the advanced tier of Show It, then you should be able to use WP Rocket with your website. However, I have run into issues in the past using WP Rocket on Show It websites. Sometimes the initial install causes the website to crash. So keep that in mind before proceeding. You might want to reach out to support before you install this plugin. All right, one of the first things that you're going to want to do is set a benchmark for your website. I'd recommend heading on over to GT Metrics to run a website speed test. And one of the reasons that I recommend GT Metrics is because because of the level of detail in their reports. You're going to see all sorts of information. And in addition to that, you'll see that Core Web Vitals is built in. Something to keep in mind, though, is that if you're not a paid user for GT Metrics, you're going to be testing the desktop speed of your website. We do have a subscription to GT Metrics because we do think it's just such a great tool, but you can definitely make do with the free version if needed. You're going to want to run an initial test just to make sure that as you install WP Rocket and you turn on different settings, you can actually see how it improves the speed of your website. You'll notice that this is a pretty great grade for a website. I've already installed WP Rocket and trust me, it wasn't this way before I had WP Rocket installed and before I did some of this website speed optimization. So let's dive into the actual WP Rocket settings. And this is what your dashboard, your dashboard will probably looks something like this if you've just installed WP Rocket. There's not a ton to do here in the dashboard, but if you ever need to clear your cache, you can go and do that here. All right, so as you test different things, you might wanna come in here and clear your cache. And then you can include Rocket Analytics, which is just to share anonymous data with WP Rocket, something that I choose not to do, mostly because just try to limit the amount of sharing of data that I do in general. Now, one of the first tabs you're gonna see is the caching tab, which makes sense for a caching tool. These are the settings that I have turned on. I enable caching for mobile devices, but I don't create a separate cache for mobile devices. This is one of those sort of outdated features that your website really shouldn't need to use. I do have uh, user-specific and restricted content on our website, but I don't don't have this currently turned on. I don't think it makes all that big of a deal. So for right now, this is not turned on. I might turn this on in the future. Down here, cache lifespan. I found that a good cache lifespan is 24 hours. As you'll see here, there is this note that you should reduce your lifespan to 10 hours or less if you start noticing issues on your website. After we're done with the caching options, we're going to jump into file optimization. And this is where we're going to optimize our CSS and JavaScript. And these are some of the settings that are probably going to make the biggest difference on your website when it comes to page loading speed. However, this is also the section where if something's going to break on your website because of a setting, it's likely going to be here. So it's really important that every time you check one of these boxes that you stop what you're doing, make sure those settings are saved. All right, so you're going to come down here to the bottom. You're going to save those changes, clear your cache, load your website, make sure everything works. I typically check in different browsers just to make sure that across browsers, everything looks okay. What I'm doing here is I don't use 
the minify CSS and combine CSS uh, options because I use auto optimize in another video after you've gone through optimizing your website with WP rocket check out my video on auto optimize and I'll go through what settings I use there but I just find that auto optimize plays a little bit better with my website on the WP rocket side of things all I've done is optimize CSS delivery I really should have Chris to come in here and add some fallback critical CSS but you can see I don't have anything right now I load JavaScript deferred and I delay JavaScript execution. There are some additional features here. So if you want to specify URLs or keywords of JavaScript files to be excluded, you can do that here. You can do something similar here for delay JavaScript execution. So I haven't done either of those things and everything uh, works fine. Then I'm going to go down to media. Now for media, the two big options here are enabling lazy load for images and for iframes and videos. I found that when I enable lazy load for iframes and videos, for whatever reason, it does wonky things to my site. So I don't have that enabled, but I do enable for images. And I found that that makes a fairly big difference when it comes to page loading speeds. Now, some people just don't like lazy load because they don't like, well, that sort of lazy loading <laughs> of images on their website. So if you're a photographer, for instance, you might not just like how lazy lazy loading looks on your website as the, the website loads. For most users on a website, it probably won't bother them. Something that maybe you should consider turning on, especially if you have a lot of images on your website. Coming down here to preload. Now for preload, I have activate preloading on and then enable link preloading. And down here, I have a few URLs to prefetch. All right. And I'll show you exactly where you can grab those URLs. So if you come back to your GT metrics report and you come down here to waterfall, you're going to go find your font files. So these are the URLs that I preload. Now you'll notice in prefetch DNS requests, these are external websites. All right. These are external URLs. So this is Google fonts, I think. And then down here, this is a URL from my website. You'll notice in here that some of these are from my website. So the domain is farm fed box. And then some of these are Google fonts. All right. So what I'm, what I typically do is I start at the top with my domain. I copy and paste the font URL and I bring it over here into preload fonts. Okay. And you notice down here in preload fonts, these are all URLs from my website. When I get down to the Google fonts here, I'm going to throw those into URLs to prefetch from external hosts. I would just copy and paste the entire URL into here. And then when you hit save changes, it's going to strip the beginning of the URL and it's going to look probably something similar to this. Again, remember after you're done making adjustments here to hit save changes, test everything on your website. This is also a good place to stop and see how some of these changes have improved the speed of your website. So we're going to come back up here. We're going to go over to advanced rules. I don't do anything in here. There are plenty of help documentation along the way if you want to take advantage of some of these advanced rule options. In database, I have a lot of this stuff turned on. You do want to be relatively careful here. So I have revisions, auto drafts, trash posts to be turned on. So every time you're like, for, for instance, creating a blog post, you'll notice that it creates past revisions in there. And so that's just stuff that hangs out on your website. And a lot of people just don't notice, but can slow down your website. So I have all of that turned off here. And I'm just, you know, good about saving the most up to date version of a blog post or a page as I'm creating it. So I have all of those turned on. And this is one of those areas where I thought I had everything turned on. The only thing that I'm not going to turn on is optimized tables. So I actually like doing that with a different tool, but I can click all transients here. And after I'm done, I'm just going to remember to go down here, save changes and optimize. I do have my website scheduled for weekly cleanups, depending on your preferences. This is something that you might want to just add to your to-do list to come and do monthly instead of trusting WP rocket to do it for you. I've never had any issues with this before, so I have it turned on. Moving to CDNs. Now this is interesting. So you can use Rocket CDN with WP Rocket, but you don't have to. And the reason that I don't have the CDN option turned on is because our website host Flywheel already utilizes a CDN. I think they use Fastly. So I have Fastly set up for the website. And so one thing I've done is I've integrated Fastly and Flywheel with Cloudflare. And that gives me greater website performance, but it also gives me some increased security as well. I believe there is a free Cloudflare plan. We use one of their paid plans though. I can't recommend Rocket CDN because I've never used it before, but I have heard good things in the past. 
you could do a quick Google search. I'm sure a number of reviews would come up. I would highly recommend using a CDN because it is one of the easiest ways to improve your website's performance. So after you have all of this set up, you come down here to Heartbeat. Again, this is going to be a little bit personal preference. This is going to be one of those things that if you do mess with these settings, you're going to want to watch for different errors in your WordPress experience because this could be one of the issues. So I've uh, selected to control heartbeat and then reduce activity. Basically, the heartbeat is responsible for things like the autosave feature whenever you're creating a blog post, let's say. I do have this activity reduced here. I probably wouldn't disable it altogether. Whatever option you choose, if it's different than the standard option, I would just make sure that it doesn't cause any issues on your website. So you can hit save changes and move on from there. There are a number of add-ons that you can use. I don't use any of these different add-ons. We use a different security tool. Like I said, I do use Cloudflare, but I integrate it through my website host. So no need to do that here. One tool that I do use with WP Rocket is Imageify. I will create another video on how we use Imageify and how it integrates with WP Rocket. And as we come over to here to tools, that's pretty much it. This is just a place where you can roll back the previous version. So if you notice that there's an issue with a new version of WP Rocket that rolls out, you can roll back to previous versions here. And then down here, there are a number of tutorials. And I will say that WP Rocket has a helpful support team and they have a lot of different tutorials out there that make it easy to get this set up on your own website. Because again, all of these different features are going to be specific to how your website is built and what your website needs are. After you're done setting this up, it doesn't have to end there. There are other things that you can do to improve your website's loading speed. I'm going to create a number of videos that focus on the different stack of tools that we use to improve our website's performance. Remember, head on back to GT Metrics and make sure you run tests along the way to see how it improves the speed of your website. And there are features that I've turned on before and it actually slowed the website down. So those are the sorts of things that you're gonna to wanna to watch out for and that's why you're gonna to wanna to consistently retest your website as you make these updates. If you're looking for a new website, be sure to check out our line of premium show it and WordPress website designs. You can find more information about those over at davyandkrista.com. And if you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any future videos. And if you have a question, drop it in the comments below and we'll make sure to get back to you.